All right, welcome back. In the last video, if you were watching it, you would have uh, saw that I did a one kilometer link between two T Halo devices in wireless bridge mode. Did not have time in the video to really talk through the setup or kind of the backstory to my particular T Halo devices, but what I'm going to try and do is touch on uh, touch on it here in this video and show you how to get up and running, at least with how things are currently that you know that could change I've provided some recommendations back for the uh, hardware but anyways you can look up T Halo uh, by Lily go here and you can find their products I'm just on their github page here alright and I have two in front of me both of them have batteries uh, that are in so that I'm able to turn them on I only have one oddly enough micro USB cable at the moment so, but th this will make sense because we are only or I am only concerned with the wireless bridge functionality, okay? And to kind of program what we need, you need to be accessing the T Halo currently from the micro USB side. Sorry, yeah, micro USB side. There is a USB C side that can also uh, get information to and from the T Halo, but that one provides power, and then two kind of deals with the ESP. 32 side of things which I'm not really interested in for what I'm looking to do so okay I got my T Halo devices um, probably was one of the early uh, runs of the T Halo devices and what I ended up having to do was get new chips that go in the the seat that I think is described uh, if you scroll down through here there, well there's two things I'm going to focus on mode 2 and uh, some of the official documentation uh, I've currently got the mode 2 documentation pulled up here, the TXH network bridge. Here you can see the little seat, I guess you would say there, that opens up and there's a chip that goes inside there that has, my understanding, the, the flash chip that has the directions that are going to interface with the T-Halo chip. I had some, uh, just some problems uh, with mine initially, but I later was sent uh, new chips that had a uh, different firmware build on it. So any new ones moving forward, that, that's probably not an issue. That's already taken care of. So with the chip in it, I was able to then start my wireless network bridge uh, functions check and, and basically setting things up. What I did was is I set a static IP on a laptop, and if you recall in the video at Raspberry Pi, uh, and I also had a static IP on a software-defined radio, but whatever it may be, maybe it's a camera uh, on one end, a laptop on the other. Important thing is you have static IPs, or you can even plug a T-Halo into a router, which I tested, and then at the other end, you know, the laptop plugging in looking for DHCP. It's again, it's a wireless bridge, so I was able to get an IP address and get on the internet. Uh, the one thing, though, uh, that is required for getting this uh, set up is a, an application that can do the AT commands and, and, and pass information back and forth. Probably some way to do it via command line. I just couldn't figure out the, uh, I think the key is this RTS setting. These images here are from a Windows application, but I'm trying to do it uh, from within Linux, this initial setup, particularly on Dragon OS. So what I did was is I found, uh, and I'm trying not to jump all over, but I found this serial port assistant, which closely resembled the Windows application, but this one being a cross-platform interest interested me. And I started by downloading the uh, a release and, and trying to install it on Dragon OS, uh, but it needed uh, Qt6 based packages, and I, you know, quickly figured out what was needed, and 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 then ultimately it worked. But what I did. In, instead, now I compile the serial port assistance on Dragon OS using the build uh, deb package. There was also another repository. The you kind of see it here, Rabbit. Uh, what is it? Uh, Rabbit Common, which was needed. So I get cloned down the serial port assistance, and then I also get cloned down Rabbit Common. And then when I ran the build deb package. Uh, Dragon OS seemed to have all the dependencies already, and somehow or another, you know, I guess because one one um, directory up, it found the uh, Rabbit Common and pulled it in and compiled and, and made a Debian package. I put that Debian package 
on my PPA. Uh, so if you're running drag the latest Dragon OS and you do something as simple as uh, sudo app install seri serial port assistant, you know, unless you have a problem with pulling in the package that I made, you can, you know, make it compile it yourself and feel comfortable with that. But uh, I pulled it in as a, a Debian package. And at that point, it's installed in the op directory and under accessories, I think it is, I'll find the serial port assistant. I can launch that. Um, again, the key thing, the RTS, uh, you know, was needed. And we're going to jump right into uh, kind of configuring this mode 2 for the wireless bridge. Very good directions here. I mean, I'm sure you can, you know, just kind of follow along and, and, and read through and, and be able to do this. I just was highlighting how to do it in Linux. A couple other things, too, currently, which hopefully is uh, addressed in a hardware revision, is when running on batteries, if you don't have the USB-C cable in, or, when, or say you do put a USB-C cable in, and you have um, the system on, you'll get a red light which indicates the battery charging is charging. But if you don't have a USB-C cable in, and you have the battery in, and you have it on, again, the current hardware revision, there's, there's no lights on. Unless you plug an Ethernet cable in and there's something at the other end of the Ethernet cable, there will be some green lights. Um, I'm hoping in a, in a future hardware revision that uh, th there's a, a light that's going to be on just because my bad memory I you know I left I left the switch on unplugged the LAN cable it, you know didn't have any indication that it was still on and so you know I tend to run the batteries dead because I got nothing showing me that it's on so hopefully that's taken care of uh, what else what else uh, yeah well let's jump right into this so I have one plugged into the computer right now and I want to check what its current configuration is so you can see this AT plus WNB CFG you can run some of these uh, commands right here which it tells you it, it tells you right here what you need to do so um, because this particular one I have it plugged in via USB-C to I was just demonstrating this into the computer as well powering it off of uh, that let me see uh, let's see what we get here you you will see that there's two different uh, serial ports that you can connect to. One being the side that is that is the USB C, and one being the side that is the micro USB. We need to make sure. I'm, I'm wanting to say it's just the USB serial one here. Baud rate. You can see what I have it set at, and I didn't change really any other settings. I'll do a connection, and. Um, Let's see, so I, I have both of them on here, or no, actually I just have one on, which uh, must be the, I'm trying to look real quick here. So we can see, let me, let me stop this here, pause it. So we can see the, the frequency, the bandwidth, the channel. Station list. So each one I have already set to its role, which we can, let me unpause this, we can get what is that role, AT plus WNBCFG, I'll send that, and then I'll pause it here, I'll send it, I'll pause it, we can see again some of the same information. Roll. Okay. Wow. That's what I was looking for. Roll station. Okay. So if you follow along the directions here, you can change your role. You can see that uh, the AT plus mode equals AP or equals station. Again, you got the window right here. You can type that in and assign one as a station and one as an AP, which I've already done that. Obviously, I want to get into learning more about uh, changing the frequencies or the channel, you know, messing with the bandwidth, uh, applying encryption, which if you want to really see a list of all the um, commands that you can send, if you look back on that main GitHub page down at the um, <clears throat> official documentation, you can see that there's the AT instruction development guide. 
you need to kind of download it so that you can uh, view all of the documentation. Obviously, there's uh, you know I got to read through the lines here and and um, you know get to what you need. But uh, down at the bottom, I was kind of looking through uh, some of the example commands here. Uh, for example, key management. Um, I was looking through and could see you know there's WPA PSK. So definitely all within the realm of possible, and I want to get to that. I just want to again get up and running quickly. So. If you have assigned one as an AP and one as a station using this serial port assistance, after that, it's really a matter of putting the uh, devices in pairing mode. So if I were to send a AT plus pair equals one, that would put the the station in pairing mode and it would be looking to pair to something else and now don't don't remove the power from it uh, if you need to you know free up another USB uh, port or you don't have another free USB port as long as you don't turn off the the on and off switch and are running it off battery power or have USB-C plugged in you're not going to lose anything you would just pull the micro USB cable out put it into your other T halo that is also powered on and then you would put it into pairing mode as well so you know you may be on the AP at that point you'd put it in pairing mode one you would see information flying past indicating that there was a successful pair and then you could send an AT plus pair equals zero you know on the one that you have uh, uh, selected in the drop down menu here after you have them both paired you'd send that AT plus pair equals zero which would turn off the pairing on the one and then you would plug back in and you know probably have to do a um, refresh of what you're connecting to so if I well I didn't mean to do that if you see that uh, when you uh, disconnect sorry there's a refresh serial port so you may just need to if you don't have them both plugged in initially uh, you may have to remember to hit that refresh so that you can find the other um, serial port and then you would just put the other one back in AT pair equals zero and there you go you have an AP and a station paired now I have I'm waiting to get more of these devices but my understanding is any additional stations you should be able to pair with the network I I without affecting any of the other already existing stations I just need to try that out and make sure I understand how that works and uh, you know I'm imagining at, at a minimum I would probably have to put the AP in pair and then put the new station in pairing but I, I need to check that to make sure that I don't disrupt an already um, paired network if that makes sense so that really uh, is just the what I wanted to cover is you know you can do it all day long in Windows and follow along the the directions that uh, Lilygo has provided which is really good at this point um, hopefully when the new hardware comes out you'll probably have the LEDs eventually I'm hoping that there's going to be a button uh, excuse me a button that would just initiate pairing maybe even a switch that would change between AP and station these are all just recommendations I'm not saying anything uh, as far as whether it's um, coming or not I, it, it, these are just things in my mind that seem to make sense to me and then if you want to get more in depth I would look through those uh, documentation to address other things that maybe you want to specifically set for your network versus just taking the default kind of out of the box pairing you know and calling it good all right I I hope that helps uh, I tried to keep this short and just kind of a, like a higher level overview if there's some specific things that you want let me know I'll do a more in-depth video I'm hoping to get uh, probably a total of six of these and do something really sophisticated with uh, some drones that I have and and uh, at that point I'll probably be able to go more in detail uh, on the the settings especially if I get into setting encryption and and some other settings so all right I hope that that helps uh, anyone that has these out there oh also if you happen to have the newer models if there's a, anybody out there and you happen to have the newer models 
I do have probably about five or six of the chips uh, that uh, could be replaced. Just f find a way to contact me, and um, I could figure out some way to send there. I know there's someone I, I have to get at least two, uh, two, but I'm happy to send out the rest that I have to, to help anybody. All right, thanks.